Hello, Xin Chao. Welcome to my video. My name's Ray, Ray Connors. I have been conducting guided tours of Vietnam for Australians. And I'd like to invite you to have a look to see if this would suit you for your next holiday. Here is a typical schedule. My last adventure in Vietnam, where I guided some people around Vietnam, was a huge success. So let's see who's up for it. This is what you do. You come with me to Vietnam. We have a loose itinerary. You make your, but you make your own from my suggestions. I guide, book hotels, etc. for you, find the places, and take you to some of out-of-the-way places, and some of the usual ones, of course. You can ask my last tour group if they were happy. They seem to have enjoyed it immensely. Here's some things that they had to say. Denise Warren said, My two weeks in Vietnam was fabulous from start to finish. I loved everything about it. It was great having Ray to show us sights we probably would not have seen on any other tour. Accommodation, food, transport, all excellent. I can't speak well enough of what a great time I had. Ready to go again. What can I say? I had a great time. No negatives to report. Seriously, it was the best. Thanks again to you for your valuable input. Thanks, Denise. Glad you enjoyed it. And Lynn said, When we were in Da Nang and we were at a restaurant, now that would be a king prawn. <laughs> we had crabs as big as dinner plates in this restaurant, as well as lots of other seafood. Here, another lady says, Fantastic people. My, our personal shopper's aid today. She was working at the hotel we were staying at in Hanoi. She did all the haggling for us from Hanoi Old Quarter. And a coffee at Highlands Cafe, drinking the famous Vietnamese coffee, Chung Nguyen. My friend Peter Simpson says, I sometimes conduct motorbike tours in Vietnam and work in conjunction with Ray. I'm always impressed with his vast local knowledge especially when it comes to interacting with the locals and his knowledge of cultural aspects. And his, his knowledge of cultural aspects of Vietnam and his people and history. I guess being able to speak Vietnamese is a big help too. What do you need to do before you go, decide to go to Vietnam? First of all, you need to check that your passport is valid. You've got enough time left on your passport. You need to complete a visa application from the Vietnamese Embassy and there's the site right there. Or you can ask your travel agent to organise if you're booking your flight via a travel agent. An alternative is to use the visa on arrival system. However, from my own personal experience, I can tell you, for something that's meant to be make the, mess, the whole thing streamlined, it's not. You need to get about $250 in US currency uh, everything in Vietnam is paid for in Vietnamese dong or Vietnamese dollars, but US currency is also widely accepted. Australian currency is generally not well accepted. It's a good idea to visit your bank to make sure that your visa card works internationally, especially in an ATM machine. You may not be able to use it to buy stuff at shops in Vietnam, but you can often pay your hotel bill in it but you do need to be sure that you can withdraw cash. Phone. You need to decide if roaming from Australia is what you want. Cheap throwaway temporary Vietnamese SIM cards are available for the time you stay in Vietnam. Also, you might wish to buy a local phone. You can buy one, $16, $17, and throw it away when you leave. A few pointers. Vietnamese people are very friendly, generally quite approachable. But there is some lingering resentment amongst older Viets over the war. You may be mistaken for an American, and that does not always end well. But generally Australians are greatly liked. Ladies, tampons, almost unknown in Vietnam, so bring a supply if needed. Appliances. If you bring electric shavers, etc., phone chargers, they operate on the same voltage as Australia. But the plugs are different. Adapters are available very cheaply from most markets in Vietnam or from cheap outlets in Australia, such as the Reject Shop. Hotels usually have adapters anyway. When venturing out of your hotel alone, 
make sure you take a hotel card with you in case you get lost. Some streets are a real maze and it's easy to get lost. But with a hotel card, a taxi can always bring you back. Scams. Do not take a cyclo at night. Mafia operators pressure them into taking you to places where you could be robbed. And the cyclo driver will act very innocent, but he's in the deal. Beggars are not always genuine. It's an easy way to make money for the rich, from the rich foreigners. Beware good-looking ladies, gentlemen, who seem very friendly. They may feel good, but they are frisking you for your wallet, or worse still, they are ladyboys who will squeeze your private parts until you hand over, and that could be painful. So how does our schedule look? Remember, our schedule is highly flexible, and these are suggestions. On the first day we meet at the hotel, we, follow our, we meet our fellow travellers at the hotel in Hanoi. Details of the booked hotel will be given to you before you fly. Taxis from the airport to the hotel will take about 40 minutes and cost around 250,000 Vietnam Dong. That's about $13. If you arrive early, you may wish to take a stroll around Lake Quan Kiam or stroll the Old Quarter for bargains. You can look both these places up on Google. Your hotel will want to keep your passport. This is quite normal and you need not be alarmed about this. If you go out before we meet, remember to take with you only what you need, only as much money as you need. Don't take out any flashy jewellery, necklaces, watches. Leave money, cards, etc. with the hotel reception and they'll keep it in a safe or you can put it in a safe in your room in most hotels. You, it may not be best to go out to buy much before we actually meet. As your foreign face and your inability to speak Vietnamese is a sure signal to merchants that you can pay more than the locals. A word about the hotels. The hotels we choose will always be of a very high standard, but not as expensive as the tourist trail ones. They'll be clean, serviced, with hot water and air conditioning, and the staff will speak English. Hotels we choose offer a breakfast as part of the deal, and no money changes hands until you actually check out at which time you get your passport back. So they hostage your passport until you pay. Hotels have been chosen partly because of their proximity to attractions, and most places of interest are accessible on foot from the hotels we choose. On the first day in the evening, in the early evening, we'll go by taxi, or say on, that is a taxi motorbike, or by rented motorbikes to a famous Hanoi restaurant called the Quan Ang Nong, where you'll be able to see a number of kitchens preparing regional delicacies from all over Vietnam. Near to our hotel in Hanoi is a famous a la carte restaurant as well called the Blue Butterfly. Absolutely fabulous food. You'll be able to wash down your selection with a local beer, Hanoi beer, or Saigon beer, or Tiger. Or maybe if you're more adventurous with the local vodka made from lemons and it's called Nep Moi Chan. The restaurant, Guan An Nong, has a very friendly and open atmosphere where locals and visitors interact for a fabulous experience. On day two in the morning in Hanoi, from the hotel we'll take a chic low tour on Huan Kiem Lake, the old quarter and some historical sites such as the One Pillar Pagoda, the tomb of Ho Chi Minh and the area around it into Ho Tay, which is West Lake. Uh, Hanoi is the city of lakes. This tour can be taken alternatively by Sayom or by rented motorcycle or car. It can be walked as well. You can lo we can lunch at Koto Restaurant where rescued street kids are being taught skills for life. In the afternoon, after lunch we'll walk across the road to the Temple of Literature, a university complex which was opened in the year 1060. This is an oasis of calm and quiet in the middle of chaos. And here you'll be able to buy handicrafts, hear a traditional music group, and simply relax and breathe in the atmosphere of history, tradition and culture. I hope you have extra storage on your camera, as this place is one of the most photographed places in all the world. Needless to say, you'll also meet here the treasure of Vietnam, the local people. They'll be keen to talk with you, tell you about their country, and ask you about yours. Also in that afternoon, if you can tear yourself away from the fascination of the Temple of, Temple of Literature, we'll take a taxi or say on to the suburb of Kose, where we can marvel at the ethnic diversity that makes up Vietnam. Displays and artifacts are from every ethnic group and some fabulous photo opportunities. 
whilst in Hanoi, whilst in Hanoi, there are plenty of side trips which you can do. You can go to Bachang Pottery Village, where you can see the, where this famous pottery is made and how it's made, and even try it yourself. Or you might want to go to the Van Phuc Silk Village, where you'll see every part of the process of producing silk, from feeding the silkworms to the dyeing and weaving of the cloth. We can go to a place where you'll see lacquerware made. Highly, highly uh, intensive production, handmade. And you'll then see why it is not particularly cheap. Or go to an artist's workshop where you can see famous artists reproducing Western treasures or their local art, which is really, really good. Or you may wish to take in a Vietnamese cooking class so you can learn how to reproduce some of the food you have while you are here. Ladies, we can go to the Dong Xuan Market where you can go crazy on shoes, 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 shoes. Here, there are something like 20 shoe shops all beside each other. So, make sure you don't bring many shoes to Vietnam with you, ladies, because you can buy whatever you need here. Just make sure you know your European style size. Well, on the third day, we go from Hanoi to Ha Long Bay, either by the hotel bus, mini bus, if we don't have a big group, or on a particular tour bus. A word about the buses. The standard buses we use is not the local city buses. The companies we choose travel from departure point to destination point and do not stop to try to collect more passengers. A very annoying custom of Vietnamese bus drivers. Buses are comfortable with reclining seats and air conditioning. The trip takes about three hours and we'll stop at a traditional Vietnamese roadhouse for lunch and the food is surprisingly good. In Halong Bay, after lunch, we transfer to the cruise junk and settle in. It says it's a cruise junk, but it does not actually use the sails. It uses a motor. Once out in Halong Bay, you'll marvel at the beauty. Maybe you want to jump ship and take a swim, or just relax on the deck. Once again, a lot of camera storage space will be needed. Enjoy an excellent uh, meal on board, and settle down in your air-conditioned cabin. <laughs> My last tour group to Halong Bay was lucky enough to score a silver service candlelit dinner in one of the caves overlooking the fabulous scenery of Halong Bay and their sailing junk. Very romantic. On the next day, after breakfast on your junk, you'll visit a floating fish farm village and take a kayak or row boat into a volcano crater. crater. You can visit one of the spectacular limestone caves that dot the bay. Uh, one tour group I took to Halong Bay had a silver service meal on one of the caves. Then we take the bus back to Hanoi. An alternative to going to Hanoi, uh, Halong Bay, or as an add-on, you could go to Sapar up in the mountains on the Chinese border. Over there is China, just over the top of those mountains. Up here you'll meet the Hmong people. There are a number of tribes of Hmong people who sell handicrafts, excellent handicrafts. And they are very, very good business people, very aggressive sellers, be aware. In the mountains you will also be able to see terraced farming on rice paddies that are built on terraces. Some people think it might be very romantic to take the overnight train to Sapa from Hanoi. I do not recommend it, as it is far from romantic. Instead, I suggest bus or hired car. But if you decide you want to take the train, that's your outlook. In Sapa, you can go trekking and stay overnight with the locals in a traditional Hmong village. They don't have the same facilities as a hotel. But it's a wonderful experience to get down with the locals and see how they live. Imagine showering in an ice-cold waterfall. <laughs> it's something, going to Sapar is not something we recommend in winter because Sapar can be surprisingly cold. And a lot of people are quite surprised to find out that it snows very heavily in these Alps. You cannot go skiing because there are no ski runs. On our next day, after 
either being in Sapa or being down on the uh, Halong Bay, we fly to Hue. Today we leave Hanoi, travel to the airport and then on to Hue. After booking into the hotel, it's time to take a Siklo or Seom to the Citadel or the Old Castle. You see here Hanoi is up here, Hue is down here. Between Hanoi and Hue, there's nothing much of great interest to tourists. So that's why we fly. Hue has the most beautiful girls in the world. This is not just my opinion, this is official. A couple of years ago, Miss World was from Hue. If you feel you can handle it and you have a cast iron stomach, you can have a meal of the local Bun Bo Hue, an insanely spicy beef dish from this area, famous throughout Vietnam for bringing tears to the eyes of even the staunchest curry chomper. So if you're up for it, bring your tissues and order Bun Bo Hue. <laughs> In the afternoon, We'll take a river boat on the Perfumed River to the Royal Tombs, where we can see Vietnam's terracotta army, complete with elephants. You could even learn how to make incense at Tianmen Pagoda, where the monk we have all seen who set himself alight protesting Buddhist persecution lived. His car is still there. On the sixth day, it's a free day. You can take a Sayom or taxi to the local beach and go kayaking, or have a vendor cook and serve your fresh seafood right on the beach. Or visit the local market for some shopping and bargaining and interacting with the locals. Or spend the day sleeping. Or take a cyclo tour of the city. On day seven, seven, we cross the demilitarized zone. Today we go by train to Hoi An, skirting the Haivan Pass. Make sure your camera is ready. We'll go by the soft seat option, which is air conditioned, and the trip only takes a few hours, passing some of the most spectacular scenery you're ever likely to see. An alternative is a hired car, as we actually go over the Haivan Pass, and we will really have our heads in the clouds. There's an old fort there that marks the division between North and South Vietnam, but of course now there is no border. Day 7 in Hoi An, in the afternoon when we get there. After settling into the hotel, we'll take a leisurely paced boat tour of the river and see the ancient town from the perspective of olden day sailors who saw it when it was Fifo, one of the busiest seaports in Asia. Finishing the river tour just after dusk, we'll dine in one of the excellent riverside restaurants. On the eighth day in Hoi An, a day free to explore. You can take a walk through the heritage listed town, stopping to eat at cute sidewalk cafes, buying clothes which are famous here. No, no buildings in the old section of the city are allowed to be changed in any way on the outside. You could take a Seom out to the beach and ask a local to take you for a ride in a coracle. <laughs> it's quite a frustrating experience because unless you know how to row one, you'll go round and round in circles and then make the locals laugh. Or you could take a bicycle, which you can hire from the hotel next to nothing and just head off in the direction you like. Plenty of interesting countryside to see, to photograph, and lots of locals to talk to. On day nine, we'll travel from Hoi An to Da Nang. It's a very short distance. On our way to Da Nang by Seom or taxi, it's not far. We'll stop at the Marble Mountains and take the easy walk over them. For those who are not prepared to walk, there is a lift, almost to the top of the mountain. We can see amazing pagodas and shrines carved into the inside of the mountains and even be able to observe craftsmen and women finish, finishing magnificent marble carvings. And oh yes, they are most definitely available for sale. On the afternoon of the ninth day in Da Nang, we'll check into a hotel and relax, take a bicycle, cyclo or motorbike tour and explore the city. We'll take a tour out to Mike Beach, which was called China Beach by the Americans. Other tours available are to the Mison Holy Land. Or we can take a tour up to the Banna Hill Station, high in the mountains overlooking Da Nang, where the French used to go on very hot days. Dinner at one of the f city's famous seafood restaurants in the evening, and early to bed tomorrow we fly early to Nha Trang, playground of Vietnam. In the train, we will book into the hotel and take a stroll on the best municipal beach in Vietnam. Then we'll take a tour of the city and surrounds, by whatever method we wish. We can take lunch at the Australian Sailing Club on the beachfront. Visit the hot springs for a mud bath, hot water bath and a massage. 
At dusk, we can join the locals on the beach for a soccer friendly and dine at a beachside restaurant such as the Louisiana Club overlooking the bay. On day 11 at Matrang, after breakfast, we take a seyom or taxi tour to Docklet Beach and the salt mines to see how the people work so hard for a living there. A dip in the ocean at Docklet Beach and back to Natrang, and a cable car to Vin Pearl to enjoy the fun park if that's your thing. And then back to the mainland for a nightcap at Crazy Kim Bar, where a lot of proceeds are raised for orphans in the area. There's an alternative way to travel a lot of these things. I've mentioned about buses and Seom and things like that. But there may be parts of our tour where you would prefer to travel by self-drive motorcycle. This is easily arranged. And while some parts can be done this way, some people may prefer car, bus, etc. You need a car license or motorcycle license from our own country to be able to hire a bike. This is a great alternative for day and half day trips. Both normal and automatic bikes are available. Automatics are normally a little more expensive, but they're still not much. Unless you're an experienced bike driver, I do not recommend this option for travel in Saigon or Hanoi, where the traffic is chaotic and almost without rules. OK, back to our tour. From Nha Trang to Saigon on about day 12. Today we travel to the airport in the Phang Rang Desert and fly to Saigon, or Ho Chi Minh City as it's often called, the throbbing heart of Vietnam. 18 million people live here, so it's a very large city. From the French colonial architecture to the ultra-modern, it's all here. Rich in modern history with places like the famous Bentan Market, where the motto is, if we don't have it, you don't need it. And into the crazy traffic jams that Saigonese live with every day. Saigon is at once breathtaking, exciting, and just a little frightening. Our hotel will be very near the centre where all the action is. On day 12, we take a cyclo tour of the inner city and try to get our heads around the sheer volume of the traffic. Our tour will include a visit to a few places, but will include the Reunification Palace, where we'll take a tour and giggle about why it's nicknamed Maxwell Smart's Palace. We'll also visit Bentan Market, where you can bargain for deals on candy, handicraft, silk, and eat fabulous food, haggle over jewellery, watches, and buy designer clothing and handbags, shoes, and so much more. The market is frequented by some very colourful beggars who will challenge you with their wit and their humour. In the evening, we'll take in the backpacker area, Pham Nu Lao, heavily frequented by backpackers from all over the world for an evening meal. We can choose from Vietnamese, Indian, American, Russian, Italian, and so much more. You can buy bestseller books and CDs and DVDs at amazing low prices from wandering vendors who'll come to your table. You can even get a massage, both types, normal and some with extras. On the 13th day, we'll go down to the Mekong Delta. Today, you'll take a nail-biting bus trip down to the Mekong Delta. You'll travel along old VC, Viet Cong canals by boats rowed by beautiful Mekong Delta women and be amazed at how rich the Delta is, its soil, its produce and its people and especially the never-ending rice fields. You'll visit orchards and sample the produce and take part in a traditional meal as well as ride in a horse cart, meet some local wildlife, visit a coconut candy factory and you may even be asked to help in making coconut candy. If you are unlucky, you may be treated to a Kai Luan music concert. Or you might be able to go to the Kai Bay floating market for some really colourful photographs. Another side trip that could be had from Saigon or Ho Chi Minh City is Vung Tau, where the Australian Army was based during the Vietnam War. Personally, I lived in Vung Tau for a number of years. It's probably the most livable city in all of Asia. We'll take a hydrofoil trip on an old Russian hydrofoil down the Saigon River, down to the beach. It's only 120 kilometres and takes about 45 minutes. There we will see an incredible, incredible beaches. And uh, lots of people who come down from Saigon for the weekend. Strangely enough, a lot of people are unaware that in Vung Tau is the second largest Jesus statue in the world. 
You can climb up to the top of the mountain, climb up inside Jesus, and you can perch, as we can see some people here have, out on his arms, or you can look out of his eyes. A lot of people find it quite amazing that almost all the people in South Vietnam are Catholics. Day 14 in Saigon, this is our last day. But it could be a free day for you. Maybe you want to take a half-day tour to the Kuchi Tunnels, where you can see how the Viet Cong were able to infiltrate the city. Maybe you want to shoot an AK-47, or visit the Khao Dai Temple in Tay Nien, where they, where they worship Jesus, Buddha, and Fred Smith. Or visit the amazing post office in Saigon, or take a river cruise, or just go back to the market for that must-have item before you leave. Enjoy. If you need, oh, by the way, if you need some professional dental work, Saigon has some of the best dentists in the world. Send me some details, and I'll make sure I get you a quote for what you need. You may rest assured this, that the work is very professional, and certainly a huge money saver. Something I haven't mentioned much, a lot of the tours could be, here could be done by motorbike tours, and if you're interested in motorbike tours, let me know. That I, my, some of my friends organize motorbike tours going from Hanoi all the way down to Saigon, or only park tours. Thank you for joining me and allowing me to show you where my real home is. They say home is where the heart is. I hope I've helped you see a very different culture and whet your appetite. And I hope you'll experience a little of what I have loved for so long. I won't say tum yet, that means goodbye. I'll say hang up lai and hope we see you again soon in Vietnam. Thank you.